Computer hacking is a complicated term. When I talk about hacking, I'll, you know, I'll tell uh, my wife I need to do some hacking this weekend. I'm not talking about breaking into somebody else's machine. So the word, you know, we have hackathons, so the word is, is somewhat, um, it's become a little bit uh, complicated in terms of what it means. Uh, but so let's talk about what malicious hacking is. So computer hacking could be programming, it could be doing stuff that's fun and really productive and really useful for society. Malicious hacking is usually defined as the idea of trying to break into another machine and gain access to something that I shouldn't have access to. So, you know, in, in the think about access control, access control would say that I can't do this and my job is to find a way to do that thing. So imagine that there's some server on the internet and that server has some valuable data on it. That data could be passwords or credit card numbers or um, private information about people or government secrets or whatever. And these servers exist. So as we're having this conversation, there are, if you could hack into every server on earth, you could find out all sorts of really fascinating dangerous um, and extremely embarrassing private personal things about people, about governments, whatever. And we've seen the result of these sorts of attacks when they've been successful. Now, how does a hack work? I mean, hacks work in a billion different ways. So there's really no way to talk about, uh, you know, a, a general purpose hack, right? But in a lot of cases, what hackers try to do is exploit vulnerabilities in software that's running on a particular machine. Now, if, this, if there is no connection between this machine and the rest of the internet, to some degree, there's almost no way to hack it without getting physical access to it. So here's the thing. If you have physical access to a machine, you can do almost anything. And so when people who do computer security, one of the first things they'll frequently do if they audit a company is they'll try to see if they can get into the company's server room. Because if I can get into your server room somehow by tricking people or by forging some authentication cards or something like that, the rest of your computer security that surrounds that site is irrelevant. If I can get physical access to your machines, you're in deep trouble. But let's say I can't, and that machine's not even connected to the internet at all. That's sometimes known as an air-gapped machine. There's a gap of air between it and the internet. And that machine is, on some level, again, unless you can get physical access to it, very secure. But most of the machines that I want to get access to, most of the machines are valuable because they have data on them that got there somewhere. So it's unlikely that there's a machine sitting there disconnected from the internet with billions of credit card numbers on it. The reason it has credit card numbers on it is because it's part of the internet and someone is using it to do something useful like maintain transaction information or something like this. So how would I get access to it? So the first thing I might need to do is find services that are running on it. And that's where tools like Nmap come into play because Nmap allows me to figure out what ports are open going into that machine and maybe get some information about the service that's running on that port. And then frequently what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to break that protocol or exploit some bug in the protocol. Um, so I might initiate some series of interactions with this machine that are designed to expose a flaw in the software that is running the protocol. And these Bugs are really, really common, and they're, they're potentially more common than we would like. Software is written by human beings. It has bugs. And when people are motivated and malicious, they will pour over that software to find the bugs. They will try lots of different things to attack that software to try to find their way in. And the goal is find some problem in the protocol that allows me to either gain access to the machine so I'm actually logged in and then I can do things I want to do, or find some other way to recover information from the machine itself. And that's how you launch these sort of internet-based hacks. Now, again, there's lots of other ways to hack machines. There are social engineering attacks. I can physically attack the machine, like I can go into the server room and stick a USB drive into it or whatever. Um, but the idea of a malicious hack is based around trying to get access to something that I should not have access to. And in a lot of cases, we do that by trying to exploit flaws in the software running on the machine that has the information that I'm trying to gain.